Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a really beautiful holiday week, eating lots of yummy food and spending time with loved ones. Over here in these mountains, the nights are very, very cold, but we still haven't gotten any snow in this valley, which I am honestly so, so grateful for. I've been climbing up into the mountains every morning and watching the sunrise. Um, And when I get really high up here, there is snow. And we've just been having the most amazing sunrises lately. I am honestly loving how quiet these days have been here in my little house in the mountains. I spent a lot of time cooking this week and just preparing the last little bits of things before the winter season comes. It is officially very cold outside, you guys, and I am loving every moment of these days here in my little cottage. There has been a lot of stillness here, so finally catching up on reading some of the books I've been meaning to get to. I feel like there is this pressure from society and social media, really, that we should be constantly working and constantly productive. And that if we're not productive all the time, then we aren't valuable or like adding value to the world. But honestly, the thing that has really changed my life completely is letting go of all of those ideas and slowing down a lot. I feel like especially during this time of year, we should not feel bad for taking more time for ourselves, for resting our bodies, and for sleeping more. Actually, research shows that humans need more sleep and more deep sleep in the winter than any other season. So this is your sign to really rest and commit to doing nothing, except maybe make a batch of cookies and watch a movie. Okay, so on this night, I made a batch of long fermented sourdough bagels. I also poured custard into this pumpkin and baked it in the earth for like three hours with a fire burning on top of it until it was very soft and caramelized. And then made this vegetable stew as well as a fermented tea that I will show you all how to make in my next video. Okay, so I was looking through one of my cookbooks and remembered that bread pudding exists. Bread pudding is an extremely underrated meal, I feel like. On this morning, I had a bunch of just like leftover stale bread from the week that were just slices that hadn't gotten eaten or just remnants. And basically to make the pudding, you need a bunch of stale bread and you chop it up super well and put it into a pan and pour in milk, sugar, eggs, and spices. And you bake it in the oven for about an hour. 
I love that you can use the stainless bread in this meal and it becomes like this warm custardy pudding and just seriously tastes so, so good. And it's just like a great way to use up something that you would kind of otherwise just throw away. You should definitely try making bread pudding if you've never made it before. I feel like these old world recipes that have been passed down for generations are always the best. Like they're always the best tasting and just like the tried and true great grandmother recipes are my absolute favorite. If you guys have any that you would like to share with me, I would love them so, so much and be eternally grateful. Okay, so I have been fermenting this dough all night and am shaping it now to bake it this afternoon. Something that works really well for me is to just always have some sort of dough fermenting. The thing is, you can let the dough proof in the fridge for up to 48 hours. And what's nice about that is when it's proofing, it's basically just ready to be thrown into the oven at any point. And it's just nice on a whim to have a fresh loaf of bread always ready to go in the fridge. It just kind of makes your life a lot easier. This year, I've really tried to be mindful of what I am buying at the grocery store and have made a declaration to myself to only purchase seasonal produce and as local as possible. I completely understand that not everyone has the option to buy locally, but if we can, I think it's super important to support our local farmers. For us, we are almost an hour to the grocery store, so I try to find people in my area to buy things from. I feel like our bodies are meant to be eating seasonally and locally because really it's how we've been living for thousands of years and our bodies kind of evolved to live this way, to live alongside nature, in harmony with nature, in communion with nature. When I live in closer connection to nature, I feel like I am honoring all of my ancestors and people that came before me to worship the earth that gives us life, to worship the earth that all of our ancestors stood on, lived on, breathed on, a place that allowed us to survive and really thrive for so many thousands of years. It's really beautiful and it's only been recently that we have caused so much harm to this earth, you know? There was a time that we really were able to have a more harmonious relationship with this earth. So on this night, I made this like stuffed bread where basically I cut it up into pieces, but not all the way through to the bottom, just like halfway through. And I put cheese and garlic and salt in all of the crevices and baked it in the oven for like 30 minutes in my Dutch oven. We had this with soup and pickled beets. So on this day, I had just gone to the farmer's market and bought in some apples and carrots, which I was very excited about because they looked so fresh and yummy. And I decided to use them to make bran muffins. One of my favorite things in the world is like a spiced muffin with lots of fruit, nuts, and seeds and made with whole wheat flour. I used to work at this coffee shop and we sold this muffin called a morning glory muffin and this is kind of inspired by that. I made an extra batch of these because I'm going to bring them to my parents house in a couple of days for the holiday. Also muffins are one of those things that you can easily freeze and they defrost really nicely. Like they stay very moist and the texture doesn't really change at all which I feel like is important.
also, I am making a couple of loaves of bread to bring to my parents' house to make stuffing with. And I am starting the dough today for that and I will bake those tomorrow probably. Throughout the past four years of living so remotely, there has been times when I have felt so incredibly lonely. Sometimes I find myself daydreaming about living in more of a community environment. I can sometimes romanticize the way we used to live in smaller communities, knowing everyone around you, helping everyone around you. I feel like the farther away we have gotten from living like that, the sadder we have become as a society. I just feel like as humans, we cannot be masters at everything. And it would be so nice to be able to be good at just a couple of things and be able to trade with our neighbors and help each other. And just like live with more of a connection with the people around us. I don't know, you guys, I've just been feeling a little lonesome. Or maybe it's just I see friends of mine that I used to know. And it looks like so much fun when they were all hanging out and... I just don't really have that anymore. Like, honestly, I don't really have any friends. Me and Logan are getting married in the spring. And when I realized I don't really have anyone to invite besides my family, it made me <laughs> kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay, so I baked the bread this morning and will be bringing this to my parents' house tomorrow. Showing up with fresh baked bread feels like just the nicest greeting. Also, throughout the day today, um, I am taking this dough out of the fridge and folding it in to itself in order to laminate it. I'm going to make everyone apple turnovers and this is going to be the dough of the turnovers, which is kind of like a puff pastry type dough. My family's getting so large, you guys. Now we are 10 people. Wait, no, wait. We're actually 11 people. And I feel like I can never make enough of anything. Tonight for dinner, I am making, of course, another soup. I feel like when it's cold outside, I could seriously eat soup every single day. I don't know, I just never get sick of it. You can just make so many different variations. Tonight I am making a curry. I'm going to bake it twice inside of this beautiful squash that I grew in the garden this year. Baking soup inside of a pumpkin is so yummy because the flavor of like sweet roasted pumpkin gets baked into the soup and it is amazing. I saw this idea for a recipe in a cookbook that I have from the 1800s that I've actually been getting a lot of inspiration from these days. Like I said, I just feel like those old Recipes that are from your grandma are always going to be the best ones. Anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this cozy video of some of the recipes that I made this week and I hope you got inspired to make some as well. Thank you so much for being here for another video and I will see you all next week, okay? Bye-bye.